have it engineered, have it thought out. We went through a process on this. We did trial lifts on this. We numbered every crane, one through ten. We had one signal man in charge of this. Every operator had his number of his crane outside and his number facing him inside. That operator had a radio. Everybody had a radio. Everybody could hear him sit. I was back about 50 yards back on the front face, watch left and right. Had another person on the opposite side and watch the front rear. We started out with this. We had it figured out. We were good for about 950,000 pounds of passion on this lift. Once we lifted it, got it up, because we over we overcalculated. We didn't rely on the low mode indicators on the crane. We knew what we had, but each individual crane could have by the engineering process. But as a safety precaution, what we did, we picked the entire roof up. We went to every crane, got the load off the computer that they were carrying. Okay? Each crane documented, written down, that operator knew that way. He knew this is the way I'm carrying right now. When the end of this lift, this is the way I'm supposed to be carrying. Started up when I'm five feet and stopped. Rechecked every frame. You still where you're supposed to. Everybody was in within just a very few, like 0.5% you know, of where they needed to be. Went up and started up the next five feet. One operator said, I'm losing load. Stopped the whole operation. All right, you're losing, who's gaining? Went through the whole system, all the team brains figured it out, got everything rebounded out, it was terrible to meet you. Took us, to said, go up 35 feet, took us right about two hours to go up, because we were stopped. We were cautious. We were scared to death. The owner of our company said, first, last, never again. <laughs> I don't want to go to the hardware of that again. It's something unique. You don't see it each and every day. It's the first one of that magnitude that we ever did. The actual weight, by the way, came down to 434,000 pounds. Once we got it up and went off the, the calculations of the cranes, figured out 437. We were rigged. All said that we were twice what we needed to be. I mean, we had a huge second factor. But still, a critical lift. Would you all agree with that? All oh, means. Anybody know what the true definition of a critical lift is? Anything that exceeds 70% of the crane's capacity or encompasses two or more cranes, that's considered a critical lift. Some companies, individual companies, will deviate one way or another. Some will go up to 75%. Most of them will have been 70%. You've got special precautions you want to do. Depending on how many you've got, what you're doing. Also, a critical lift could be not here. Critical lift could be as much meaning the value of your piece of equipment. Okay? I've got a MRI worth three and a half million dollars. Is that a critical lift? In your insurance company's eyes it could very well be because you only have a million dollars worth of coverage. Once you rent this crane, you're going to do the rigging. Below that hook is on you. Above that hook, on the crane over the longer and operate. If you're doing your own rig, something to think about, something to consider and how you do your business. I can tell you how you do your business, the things to consider. Proper communication ensures a successful living. Overcome language barriers. Big problem we're having here, especially in the residential market area. We've got nice cards that we've made out. W Grubb. Once all hand signals are international known. Okay? All of them. We've taken the ones with the English language one, transposed them, and put the Spanish equivalent or interpretation on the back. Okay? English on one side, Spanish on the back. It doesn't encompass everything. We've got so many people in here, different dialects, different variations of Spanish, and some of them don't know what they are, so we're still overcoming those barriers as well. Radio communication, clear, concise communication. Next tails don't cut. Next tails cut off. They have a three to five second delay. And when you key up, and you've really got to be on your game, you've really got to know how to communicate over radio with a frame like that. Once you key up and start talking, once you acknowledge that he hears you, you should never let go of that button. You're continually talking to that operator. If you break communication with 
that operator, he's going to stop. He has no clue what you want. So you need to be continually telling him what you want to do. If he cannot see you, you're his eyes and ears. It's up to you or your people, your workers, to tell him what you need to do. Hand signal charts. We got them on in the back. I said international recognized. Safety compliance. Know what the contract says. Your plant says, a lot of different plants have a lot of different versions of what they need to be done. So you've got to know rules, regulations, governing where you're at, by virtue of contract, plant rules and regulations, a variety of them. Host of state and company projects conduct regular training and communication efforts are not right to stop you. You can't hear you, you stop you. can't see you, it's going to stop you. That's a good conscientious operator. That's not somebody who's scared and I know what they're doing. They know the right thing to do. Communication is broken. He's got to stop. He has no clue what's going on. He can't see. Sometimes even if he can't see, he might have a question in his mind. Hand signal charts. These are the Spanish version. Don't speak it, don't read it. I can't help you out. Y'all can, not to set up that. Great selection. Okay. Great selection depends on weight of the load, size of the load. Size of the load is a big part of that. Radius of the load, height, and the set point, attachment points on the load. Attachment points might be far out, you might have to have a 100 foot of rigging up. Okay? Frame a 60 feet of boom or 100 feet of rigging, not going to make a successful lift. No way, shape, or form. Same thing with the size of the load. You might have a 40 foot seat attached. The lifting points are 40 feet apart. To be proper and have a nice 60 degree angle on that, you got to have 40 feet of rig coming off each side. So, what's your tip point going to be? Somebody's a mathematician right here, a genius on this stuff. 35, 40 feet? Well, you're only talking 7,000 pounds. You got an eight and a half ton of crane here, but he's only got 22 feet of boom. Technically, he can pick the load up, but he don't have enough boom to do what you got. So, it's things like that you got to think about. You got to know the size of the load will impact the size of the crane. Site conditions, ground conditions, overhead conditions, we talked about that, hammering it in, hammering it in, as you go. There's a rule of thumb when you, when you do a training class, if it's a really viable, important point that you want to talk out for adult educational purposes, you need to repeat it seven times. So I think that's probably about number six or seven on the overhead power line. So just to be safe, number seven is don't pull with overhead power line. They're dangerous, they're kidding. Other considerations, other contractors working in your area. Know what the other crafts are doing. That's where scheduling comes in. Know who's working where, what work's coming up, and how they interfere with each other. Airports, traffic control. We're working a job downtown Richmond. I'm in line 241 foot straight shot from the helipad that's up 300 feet on top of the building. Okay, we said, well, it's 300 feet up, 241 feet away from it. Yeah, that's not bad, except the tip of my boom is 380. A little problem. So unique precautions have to be made to get to everybody who does a med flight. All parties involved. You got a communication system. I got that crane lit up like a proverbial Christmas tree. White lights during the day, red lights during the night. And put to meet what the hospital wanted for a lighting system. Cost $8,000. Just for lights, with a backup system for redundancy in case power failed that the box we were plugged into, we had to tie into the emergency generator system right there in the hospital. So these are things you have to take into consideration on contract proposals, documentation. You need to ask these questions before for safety, get all parties involved. You've got to consider the helicopters to fly in the time. Is it a critical lift? What's the criteria for a critical lift? Or value of the equipment? Potential value of the equipment? Yes. Okay. We're paying attention. Either. We'll get on with this. I know it's still late in the afternoon. I told you I'm going to try my best to keep you away. Critical lift consideration again. Here we go. Monetary value. The condition of the load. You might have a difference between, and this is the crane side of things. 
This could be on the demolition. This could be on the contract side. All right. Virginia Dominion Power, Dominion Virginia Power, however you want to say it, might have a blown transform. Okay? It's blown. It's no good. I'm going to take you out. It's got a value of $200,000. Basically, scrap that. Okay? Next question is, Mr. Virginia Power, you got a new transform going in. What's the cost on that? Now, scrap value is 200 grand on that one. We're at a million on the new one. Got to think. I got enough coverage. Call somebody. Hey, insurance bank, how am I on this? Things you got to be said. Condition of the load, proximity of the load to the green. Is it down here where I can see it? Is it close to the wall? Is it up for a flight deck of the carrier? Is it on top of a high rise building? Yeah, sometimes even as small as a 500 pound HVAC compressor that you can't take up by the elevator. You can't take up by any other means but a crane to get it up on the roof. Depending on your application, which you got, that could be considered perfectly. <coughs> Setting up in the city street, what precautions do I have to make? I'm downtown Richmond, good Lord, you've got to know how many tunnels are in downtown Richmond. And you've got to be with traffic engineering to know what you're up against. Things like this, little key components, know your brand conditions. Government or contract mandates. Certain lifts require fully engineered and documented lift plans. That covers everybody. Looks good on paper, and believe it or not, that's a good selling point for a lot of huge projects. Fourth thought, you might spend three, four thousand dollars to have it engineered. But once you take it out and the selling point to your customer, here's what I've done. I've put a lot of thought process into making this lift. I want to be successful. I want to take care of your equipment, my company, the crane company, all parties involved. We all will go home safely. Texas A&M, 1986, I believe it is, down in, uh, well, Texas A&M. Yeah. Critical lift gone bad. And I'll tell you what, when it's all said and done, I'll let y'all try to figure out what happened here, and I'll tell you what I was told to actually cause. You just barely see the load, <coughs> load going up. Load going up. Iron workers are lost. Iron workers are lost. Load coming down. Man lifts, cranes. No more iron workers on the hill. Iron workers on the air. Be another angle on it coming up, show you a little bit of different variables. All this green one, all this green two. Iron work, iron workers, iron workers. Man lifts, cranes, all kinds of stuff on the inside of the stadium. See it coming up, coming up. I got a thought on what may have been the cause of that accident. I've got low line failure potential. Lift cable broke. Rigging problem with crane one. The operator, and this was told to me by an individual in the insurance industry that investigated this. Operator crane number one, big fellow, huge guy. Never done a tandem lift before, a two crane lift. His operator's cab is on the opposite side of the boom. You can see crane number two down there. So as they're coming up, they're coming up, and he can't see this. As he's still coming up, he stands up out of the seat, leans out the window to look down underneath his boom. As he does that, Stomach, it's the hoist lead. 
Dodson and neutral. Before he could get back and see the fly brakes, several people dead, huge amount of damage. Trained, skilled, competent people will make a break an operation. I don't know his competence enough, don't know the individual, I really can't speak of that, but having a game plan, conveying the information, pre-planning your jobs and your operations can potentially eliminate things like this. Tell your people, talk about it. Simple, a JSA, job safety analysis, or whatever term you may have at your individual plants or workplaces. Talk about it. It doesn't, might not be elaborate, might not write it down. But just come down, get the crew together, and talk about it. Here's what we're going to do. Hope frame one up, hope frame two up. Together we're going to pick this truss. We'll put it up, take these iron workers. They're going to put bolts in it. They're going to tighten it up. They're going to 